I think we are all in a, in a very exciting time when it comes to the gas and LNG scenario in the world. It's exciting, it's um, uh, difficult, and also a very cautious time otherwise for all the um, players in the gas and LNG field, particularly the producers in that. We have at the same time, we are witnessing and have witnessed by now several major gas finds. If you see worldwide, um, besides the huge shale revolution in the U.S., we have uh, Russia, uh, huge finds and uh, changing gears to from a conventional pipe gas supply to LNG supply now. We have East of Africa, we have Australia, almost becoming now with the project, declared projects as the leader in the world as far as LNG is concerned. We have offshore Israel, huge project, and if you talk about Iran, we do not know what quantities of gas they could really produce. As I know, there are about four LNG projects that have been conceptualized in Iran. Um, all this means that uh, uh, the availability of LNG is going to be abundant, pretty much there. And also from the timelines, if you see, the Australian projects from this year onwards, we are seeing some of them will be commissioned. Then comes the U.S., maybe next year onwards, the volumes would be very significantly and fast, uh, you know, enhancing uh, volumes would be there. Russia, we see projects like Yamal and others, uh, 2019 onwards. And then we have the east of Africa, maybe around 21st, 22nd, um, uh, this is 2021, 2022 kind of a time frame. So I think the next um, several years, we find that more capacity is being adding. One comfort is there that U.S. has said that they have reserves which they can supply and take care of their energy needs for 100 years. And if you add on this, so that's kind of a comfort that all of us have in the world that, well, we have energy source which is there, cleaner, better, good, good energy source. And we see that in the next four, five years' time, perhaps projects that have been declared liquefaction projects means that almost 100% of its capacity, existing capacity, will be added on. Well, it may not happen also because some of them have run into difficulty because of the latest uh, problems there, uh, like the crude oil prices coming down, so the, the assumptions that the projects have made, many of them are finding it difficult. But nevertheless, the availability of LNG in abundance is assured for many years to come. Also, we should see, as um, uh, Mr. Tripathi said, that gas market is different than oil market and is very unique in the sense that it is segmented. The pricing in American continent is different, European continent is different, and the Asian con continent different, but one should question why it should be like this, actually. If the LNG is available and is to be transported like crude oil, and we have gas now more dispersed than um, oil, then this shouldn't happen. But this is what something is very unique to the gas um, uh, business. But we see the low crude price regime is bringing the, the, all this pricing to a very narrow range, coming closer. This is closing on. And I feel that this kind of volatility changes that are happening, also these new volumes that would be available in the world market, it would take about next maybe one to two years minimum to see some kind of a settlement of the pricing in certain range would happen, uh, maybe, maybe three years time or so. But then till that time, all the uh, producers as also the buyers are really hesitant to go into a long-term kind of a deal and they are trying to see their requirements. So, so that's the kind of thing that is, uh, word is, uh, actually experiencing, some of them are non-sustainable, perhaps would take time, as I said, to settle down to some uh, reasonable level of pricing and availability. But what it all means to India, actually, we should see. Number one, I think India has an opportunity for a diversified supply portfolio. We have many more um, producers, 
different regions that are available to India. And I think it's good for country, for energy security. Also consumers would be happy to get perhaps better price thing. Number two, we are having new pricing arrangements, new structures are coming up there. Sellers who are not, they were very rigid, are not, were open to some kind of a, a more flexible offerings to the consumers are now very much open to discuss. And therefore we see all kinds of uh, flexibility in, in pricing, whether it's oil linked, or it is Henry Hub linked, or it's a hybrid, or there are other benchmarks coming up here. So we, we see a lot of flexibility happening there, uh, good for the consumer, good for the market. We also see certain new clauses that are coming in, in, the, in, the, in the contractual conditions, which are becoming more consumer friendly. For example, the usual uh, uh, volume, you take this much or pay. That is getting replaced to a get extent and, and, and the, a, a process of flexibility is coming there. Uh, number two, uh, used to have, um, again, take or pay, but then today I think the, the sellers are more open to have liquidated damages kind of concept building in there. Um, also, this was a LNG supply contract from point A to point B, and no diversions, you do it, consume it, or leave it. Today, we have several contracts where you could divert it, and there are mechanisms built in now as what you do if you are not able to consume because of some operational reasons, or when the market suddenly goes haywire and you are really in a deep trouble. So all this means, again, very flexible, friendly, kind of uh, uh, conditions that are coming into the contracts and good for, I think, both ways, sellers are able to um, bring in these things, offer this, and then the consumers are very much happy with that. Also, perhaps the third point for, for India would be the cost of transportation because it also is giving us an opportunity to swap the gas and therefore cut down on some of the transportation costs. Another opportunity I see in this is that the Indian companies can perhaps now participate, integrate themselves to the liquefaction projects or right up to the upstream projects at perhaps more favorable terms and conditions. And I see that several of the Indian companies have actually uh, taken advantage of this opportunity and they're very much into the right up to the upstream there. We also see that the volumes or the percentage of the spot cargoes has gone significantly high in the overall uh, LNG portfolio. And this, to my mind, is a signal that the market is slowly maturing because your immediate requirement, your short-term requirement is also being met. And this has gone beyond 30% of the total LNG that is being sort of ported. So I think these are the positives as I see from the Indian perspective, the consumer from the Indian um, energy security, we, are, we must recognize that uh, uh, we are about um, almost 17% of the world's population and making energy available at affordable price, we'll have to perhaps everything, all kinds of energy. And um, no doubt, uh, gas offers many uh, advantages to, to country, particularly from the emissions point of view, LNG being perhaps the cleanest fuel or cleanest gas available in the world as of today. I'll now touch upon a few challenges, challenges which I see from the perspective of India. Number one, I see that um, infrastructure is a big problem in the country. When we see oil and gas, uh, particularly considering gas, gas, as pointed out, is different than oil and it has to be brought in to the nearest point to the consumer through a pipeline. And uh, we are having a pipeline of about um, uh, 16,000 kilometers or so. Uh, there are a number of them are um, proposed, few of them are under construction, but as of now, just about 16,000 kilometers of pipeline. 
and we aspire to become a mature big market uh, for gas. But when we compare ourselves, what the other markets have done, how they have come up, how they have matured, and what kind of pipeline network, and what actually facilitated their development into a big market, the biggest factor, one single factor that I'll point out is the pipeline. US has 2.5 million miles of pipeline. Europe, if you put broadly, major pipelines, about 300,000 kilometers of pipeline, and many of them are being built. So 16,000 kilometers for our size of country is definitely not in sufficient. Our regional markets or areas are not even connected. So where you have gas somewhere else, you have to, for example, northeast, you have to necessarily flare it or consume somewhere if you can. Otherwise, you just can't transport it to other regions. So this is, to my mind, one of the biggest thing, and uh, uh, this needs to be done. And how do you do that? I leave it to you. We have uh, Mr. Mohanty here. I was provoking him that something needs to be done for the pipeline. Whether it's a gas highways that was talked about in the ministry or a pipeline through a present uh, method or process of bidding, we see very absurd kinds of approaches when we see for first 300 kilometers, one pesa tariff. Unre unrealistic, there's something inherently uh, wrong with the process that needs to be done. And then if the, if the funding of such project is a problem, then the best thing would be to really look at the viability gap funding or even the CES that could be used for, and these could be seen as national assets to bring down actually gas to northeast, southwest kind of a major regions, and then the pipelines could be developed. But something needs to be done. Also, when we see um, part actions, LNG terminal, is not fully uh, having an infrastructure status. Partly it is given, partly it's not given. I don't know, I do not understand what is the policy of this. It, it is, you, if you remove that infrastructure part, the, the terminal would not work. So you need to see this in totality, and a part of the terminal cannot be given an infrastructure status and the others not. Unless the entire terminal is expected to run, it should be seen as an as a infrastructure uh, the status issue and therefore that needs to be seen. So from pipeline to my mind the biggest single issue for our country. Number two, opening up of the market. We have a very controlled market. With multiple prices, pricing being fixed by the government, major consuming sectors also being regulated by fertilizer and power it becomes very difficult for, for sellers to really find way. And therefore, I think we must do everything to move towards an open market. We had proposed that to test this and to start uh, trigger it, even the domestic gas producers be permitted to sell 10 to 15 percent of their gas production on a free market basis. Let this be experimented and seen that what kind of pricing range it would come. This would be the first step toward discovering the right price of the gas there. So something has to be done and started, and uh, the, the idea is that we must really open up market and should be a market-driven uh, uh, scenario. The third point from the challenges, I, I see that we have hardly any domestic national benchmarks. All these uh, fuels compete with each other, diesel, naphtha, FO. But today we do not have any national benchmark. Companies use different benchmarks, and the pricing vis-a-vis -vis LNG or any other source varies and has a different financial uh, you know, opportunity, I would say, in a region A to region B or region C. So we need to really move towards having national benchmark indices for these petro products, which replace each other. And the fourth is, in the same line, we must have an international benchmark index for LNG for India. When we compare ourselves, Asia consumes two-thirds of LNG. This is the biggest consumer, number of countries there. Uh, the top four or five countries are all in the Asia. Why one uh, index we should use? 
JCC linked uh, some kind of an index compared to uh, uh, Europe. Dr. Balian, can you wind up quickly? This last point, sir. Uh, please. No, I think if I'm running short, I'll just limit that. I, my strong uh, recommendation would be to have an international benchmark which is suitable for Indian uh, level of uh, energy price, uh, uh, and, and that should be used for buying energy, buying particularly LNG. I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much.